computer. Let's have our first player next on to the table. Who is it going to be? Mick Hill is in. The bounty is going to get himself a game. Come on in, Mick. Next up in the last man standing, who is going to take a chance at Mick Hill's Omniotherapy bounty money? Craig Waddingham. The Champions League winner is in. Or rather than it going, you know, somebody picking, which is, is huge. Yeah. Well, we're up and we're up and running again. It's another race to six frames. 30 minutes on that match clock, and Mick Hill, top seed, is at the table. Good break, this actually. I mean, yeah, he's half lost the keyboard. Lovely, he flushed it? it, didn't he? Yeah. And as much as we've talked a lot this so far today about the gaming show element, what's going on, what people's mindsets. This is where, this is the natural habitat for, for you guys out there, race to six, in the arena, you've got to kind of switch everything else off and just try and focus on the game. Yeah, no, ex exactly right. It's, at the end of the day, you've still got to put the balls. And that's the main thing. I suppose it's maybe goes back to the old, the golden days when you see Big Break on TV with the snooker, because although that's a fantastic game show with Jim Davison and John Virgo, you still had to pot the balls to win the show. Absolutely. Good chance here for Mick. I'm assuming the red does go to the bottom left, the one nearest it. But if it doesn't, that's his problem. Yeah, it doesn't look like it does it on our does screen. It? However, I would have thought he would have definitely taken yellows if it doesn't go. So I'm assuming it goes. No, it yeah. doesn't go. The overhead tells us it doesn't. So now he's coming down to attack it. Could play short position. Or he could play into it. Be surprised if he plays into it, but Yeah, you see. I think he's got to play into it off two cushions here. That's what he's tried. Just I thought he it. would look at one cushion and just try and rest into the yellow and just leave, take it, leave it bottom right. Yeah, and no, I think the, the yellow that was closest to the red that he just potted might have just been in the way of that angle, but because he's missed that now, he's um he may need a, a slight swerve shot here to, to get through to the potting angle on this red. Let's see, can he get through to it? Wow. Yeah. Oh, he does hit the eight ball. First chance goes for Mick Hill then. And Craig Waddingham, the man of the moment. If you were with us last Monday, you'd have seen him picking up his first professional title with Ultimate Paul. Took down the Champions League in style, beating the defending champion Stevie Dempsey in the final. Yeah, and I think he deserved that title, especially after what happened to him last year when Shane nipped him in the last second, yeah. didn't he? <laughs> it was his third pro final with Ultimate Paul. He already picked up two challenger titles as well coming through. Many people thought he was too good to be in the challengers, but he went there and proved it. Yeah, he's such a good player. He's got to be considered one of the favourites for this title. Yeah, I had him down as probably in the conversation with two or three others as, as favourite for the event today because... I think the likelihood of him being picked out was slim, but you can't avoid the random draw. Mm. And who would have thought Tom Cousins, Neil Raybone, Craig Waddingham and Mick Hill would have been pulled out in the first few matches? Yeah. I don't think I'd have been touching any of them guys. Well, what would you be thinking? Are you thinking of staying away from the hitmen or are you thinking about the potential prize on offer? I would potentially consider it my third match. Okay. I, would, I, would, I would probably go for somebody, to be honest, look, looking at the field, I would probably go against somebody that maybe I'd like, I'd enjoy playing against, um, maybe somebody that I hadn't played, like I just went out for lunch with Oli Bale and, uh, yeah. you know, we talked about it and we, we've never played each other, it's amazing, we've been in so many tournaments together and we've never actually been drawn against each other, so I don't know, maybe I might think about calling him out, I'm not too sure. Well, nervy start here. Craig's missed that because he was trying to pot it thick to hold on the yellow. But he couldn't let make a better angle, could he? No, it was just perfection for him. It could be a let off here for Mick then. Mick's pretty good when he gets one chance of frame. You give him two, you're in trouble. Oh, yes. And 
machine is up and running. Fantastic break. White ball straight down the line. Best break of the day. Yeah. That was huge. Yeah, he's got to be going yellows, hasn't he? Yeah, these are just lovely. And the one thing that Wad did so well in the Champions League is when he did make a, an error, which was very, very rare, but when he did, it, it didn't bother him at all. It was just, right, OK, next chance. He looked like a man on a mission to me. Yeah. And, he, and he really did. And that, to me, comes down to confidence. As a player that knows he's playing well and you can't always play flawlessly. Errors will happen. They, they, don't, they don't matter. It's just get back on it. Yeah, he just had it in his head, just looking at his body language when he was playing, that this was going to be his tournament no matter what. Yeah. And he made sure it was. He played absolutely fantastic. Another sign of confidence there, taking the one down the cushion before the colour sets are assigned, but he'll be disappointed he missed the cannon on the red. So he has actually got more work in this visit than he wanted. And another missed spot from Greg. Well, I think it's fair to say that Wad might be a little bit cold then. That's two missed pots yeah. in two frames, and two missed pots in about five shots. And well, this is the thing with this format, because you can stand around watching the other players play all day and they're getting warmed up and then you come on cold. So you've you got to expect the first couple of frames when people come out then, you know, to, to, to miss a few balls or to get out of position a little bit. He hasn't and left Mick much here, I don't think. No. Can he just maybe play a loss of turn shot here? Yeah, that's what oh, he's tried. very clever. Very, oh, very clever that shot. one. He, he holds up his hand, I think, because he, he got the cue ball wrong there. He was actually oh. playing that as a two-way shot, trying to... He was playing the out-and-out -out loss of turn, and the fact that he's made the combination shot, because he stuck the, the yellow on. Yes. Yeah, no, I think he was just trying to get the white ball behind the, yeah. the red that he's closest to at the moment, but he just did it too hard. But can he take advantage of the skill shot? It's, he hasn't really landed on anything easy at all. The downside of, of Mick is that, as you say, hasn't landed on anything here. And he hasn't got... A safety that would guarantee that Craig's not going to pop his next ball. You playing the double here? You're playing the plant? What a fantastic plant. He would have been hoping that red would snick up over the right hand corner pocket and it hasn't. Yeah, it's not getting any easier for him. It's a good indication of how Mick's feeling this next shot. Does he go for the red down the rail? Well, he can just roll up to the red in the top right corner, but then he's leaving Craig a double. So he's he's thinking the best thing is let's go let, let's go for the pot. Cued beautifully. beautifully. Yeah, perfect cue. Full blooded, gave it every chance. Nice and close to the object ball. The little angle just to come out to in the middle of the table for the black. Just played, underdone that a bit. Yeah, it's like Grimmis walked around the table as well. Oh. Still expecting to get it. Be careful of the cue ball in the same pocket as the black. Yeah, he was fine. One of those players will win the inaugural last man standing brought to you by Outpatient Network. Sound break again. Flushed it. Wow. Even better than his first, that one. Absolutely squared it up. Wow, well, you can take you can split. take your pick, but I'm sure it will probably go reds. But you can you can even go yellows here because I'm sure that yellow goes past in the top left corner as well. So see how Mick feels. I know Mick will be coming, and he's such a poor purist. He'll be coming into this event thinking it's not really an event for him, and he'll come in and embrace it. Of course he will, but he's had a very very quiet 2023, and I think. Uh, He'd love just to remind a few people, because he slid down the provisional rankings. Obviously, he went in as the yeah. comfortable number one. He's down to fourth now in the provisional. Very, very quiet, yeah. Yeah, he has. And it's going to be very interesting if he wins this match to see if he tries to call out one of the top guns. Well, yeah, I mean, absolutely. Uh, I'm really, really excited to see what Mick will do. But, of course, it could be Craig and... We had Craig on Altmaul Extra a few weeks ago, and 
He said he'd take the big boys on. Yeah. Well, he's he's had no choice here. He's got to take Mick on. Exactly. But will he call out another one? Yeah, well, it's early days yet. I shouldn't, you know, anything can happen. It is early days. And it's also worth pointing out, because Mick is a hitman, that there is the omniotherapy bounty on his head. So if Craig was to win, he'd have the potential to win that. He would go to a draw. But it also mean Mick could have an extra life, because there is an extra life dangling out there, one for the tournament, mm. for any hitman that loses, that could get drawn out for him. So it's not all over for him if he was to lose but that's all for the end of the match all that's got to be out of his mind right now just pinch the pocket just to widen the angle yeah he's he'll probably just um just play to just to leave an angle on the the last red just to drop down for the black into the right hand center pocket here because that's just the easy way of going about it rather than having to spectate the white over to the other side of the table. Let's see what he does. A bit more angle on it than, than it appeared. And that's gone wrong. Yeah, this is definitely not the uh, way he drew it up when he started this visit. This is tough to get nice there on this black. may even choose to play it up the top left and just screw the white back. Oh, let's see how he plays this. He's found the gap there. Has he found the gap here? No, he no. hasn't. Snookers himself. Huge moment in this match. Yep. Massive, a massive moment. Difference between 3-1, sorry, 3-0 and 2-1 is huge. And Mick Hill may well have given away his chance to go 3-0. He'll hit this eight ball solid and he'll go close, but it's a tough one. One cushion. Oh, he's having to bend it. Bend it's even it. worse. Can't get to the one cushion. That's and it's going to be a foul. I thought he could come off the bottom cushion, but the yellow was in the way. Yeah. And I was thinking if he'd come off the bottom cushion, he'd get close to the left centre. But the yellow is in the way. Yeah, because he, caught, he over, he over um, swerved it, caught the black full in the face, just didn't have the pace to reach a cushion. So these are gone. This is allowing Craig Wanningham into the match. Craig could have been sat there in his chair thinking, I'm 3-0 down here, because it's not often that Mick would, would lose from that situation with two reds left. It's not very often Mick would have a layer like that that he doesn't take out as well. Yeah. When everything goes and they're, they're fairly wide open for him not to pick the route. Mm -hmm. Definitely a lifeline for Craig. trouble as you'd expect yeah 2-1 it is he's just right up there with the very best players in the world well I think in that final against Shane when he lost it in the last second didn't he get a dreadful kick in the oh, frame did, before yeah. or something yeah. when it was almost on a plate there as well so he counted himself unlucky twice there this is an exhibition of breaking haven't gone so nice this time though A little bit more precision, precision required on the positional play here, but initial glance, the yellows actually look as if each ball might have its own pocket without any cannons required. Is he too straight? I think he wanted to be just past the straight, and just that little simple opening up shot. Yeah, he played that in such a way as he gave himself options. Little, little nudge on the two reds, just give him that little bit of a, a safety blanket just in case um, he does make a mistake. If he drops this in the middle, I don't know whether he can hold to play the shot he was just looking at. Yeah, I think he's going to drop this in the middle and then just try and cannon the black out of the way slightly for the for the next yellow. The yellow just to the left of the red. Looks like he could just hold. Yeah, I was worried that he was going to land on the straight again, which is where he was previously. 
needs just that three-quarter ball angle just for that nice little soft cannon on the eight ball and everything's then open. Yeah, and this is the good thing. This is the thing that these top players do. They play these cannons in such a way as they don't have to be on the ball that they're opening up. He was always on that ball up to the top left corner, or top right as we look at it now on our screens. So eight ball's just gone a little bit. That's why he's having to go up the table before the one down the table, because of where the eight ball's gone. No problems. Oh, how this match has turned on that. Mm. One positional error from Mick Hill, which in truth was more of a pattern error earlier on in the visit. Yeah, it was, it was more the second last red rather than the, the last red um, because he just left it so difficult to get on the black. A little bit short there. Tricky little black into the centre bag. Just off the thick jaw. Job done for Wad. 2-2. Two, two. He's been breaking great. Can he, if he can keep that going, it puts him in good stead. Cue ball's close. Oh, it's close. Ooh. Ooh, will it drop top left, top right? Oh, all of like the above and the middle. Look, look <laughs> like it was going to be dry for so long, and all of a sudden three balls simultaneously fall in, and, and all's mm. good. And Mick Hill has another opportunity. And straight down. No doubts in his mind what he was doing there. There was... No planning of the route or anything, straight in there. We're about to go to 15 seconds a shot. We're not there yet, but Mick's almost playing as though we are. No, he's just going to... Is he using these two reds as a stopper? Yeah, and he'll take that. Okay, yeah. Yeah. That could have gone wrong. It's almost a very un-Mick Hill type of shot, but he was kind of backed into it and had yeah. no real choice but to do that because the first shot was a tricky cutback with the control being so tricky and that's where he landed. Sometimes you just have to take your medicine and, and take what you've got. Oh, it's another positional error from Mick Hill though. He wants to be on the one past the eight ball. Yeah, I think he was just trying to nudge into the black there rather than the red. And again, he's still on a, a pot here, but very tricky positional shot once again. Yeah, also, it's not just that. I mean, if he was able to pop the one in the middle and, and get on the yellow down the table, the angle he would have he, it makes getting on the eight ball incredibly yeah. tough as well. So even if he was able to, say, get somewhere near the middle of the table off the next shot, how do you then play position onto the eight? This is really, really tricky. Yeah. There's him guaranteeing being on the yellow. Yeah, this is... Um, expecting to get the pot here. Where's the cue ball going? Probably coming back on the line to roughly where it is now. Oh, that is absolutely that. beautiful. He played that in such a way that he was giving himself every opportunity, whatever the cannon, whatever the line. I don't think Hardy, there's very few players that are 15 seconds a shot is is, is slow. It's, it's, sorry, he's very fast. Um, but it's, it's tricky sometimes. But I think the direct comparison with Wads fasc a fascinating one because we see another fantastic rake from Craig is that Craig is always happy just to roll with the punches on a clearance. He's not precious about a pattern mm. at all. No, it wouldn't bother true. him. He yeah. just wants to get out. And if he, he keeps potting and finding a way, it won't, wouldn't bother him what he has to do. No, that's right. And when it is 15 seconds a shot, when you get a, an opening like this, it's, um, it, it's that bit easier. It's when you've got to really think about what you're going to do yeah. to try and dislodge a couple of balls or something like that, however it's going to be. But... Here, Craig's really going to have two choices every every shot he plays. I'm just going to leave the one at the bottom of the table. That will connect him to the eight ball. going to plan so far. Yeah, he's taking these out nicely. Greg's just sticking with him. Three all. Credit to Neil Raybone. Yeah, absolutely. Out Tom Cousins, first game. 
the first time we've ever played this tournament and the first guy to actually get called out is Tom Cousins, who's been winning <laughs> it's nearly everything. Yeah, it's incredible, isn't it? It's amazing. But I think Neil Neil Rayburn probably thought, All right, if I'm going to win this tournament, I'm going to win it or I'm just going to go out early firing. Well, the, I mean, the, the one big bonus, obviously, is the, the omniotherapy bonus bounty that's yes. on the heads of these four hitmen. It's the... It yeah. is the it's a chance to win some easy money. Well, not to win easy money, but without quick winning money. the tournament, yeah. Worth pointing out while we're talking about the sort of prize money in this tournament, it is payments down to the tenth place. So you know we started with twenty six. We've lost four. We're at twenty two right now. A long way to go before the prize money starts. And I think yeah. we'll start thinking like poker, won't it? There'll be like a bubble match at some point. And uh, as long as you've got a chip and a chair. Chip and a chair. Chip, chip, and, chip and a chair. chair you've you yeah. got a chance. Or a bit of chalk and a cue. You're chalk fine. and a cue. You've got a chance. <laughs> You see, now we are deep into the 15 seconds of shot. Mick is is under it, being pushed by that 15 seconds. So yeah, he's just moving that a little bit quicker around the table, which you have to do. You, you can't go around looking at too many um, alternatives when there's only 15 seconds to play your shot. Play that shot nicely with check side, just to avoid the yellows. There are players that don't look rushed when it's at 15 seconds a shot, but Mick's always been one of those that just looks a little bit on the rush side. Yeah. I mean, everybody in their own mind is rushed at 15 seconds a shot, but some players don't look it. Sure, it's the full pocket to the bottom right. So, would like to be nicely on it. Oh, he hasn't, has he? Oh, he has. Not again, Mick. He has snookered himself onto the. That's just a loose one. This is a collector's item, and that's a, a sign of frustration there for Mick, which is another collector's item. Yeah, didn't even line that one up. Huge frustration for Mick Hill. All the room in the world to land on this final red. I said he wants to land on it nicely because it was, wasn't the full pocket, but. That's just a loose one. And this match really has turned. Remember, Mick had an opportunity to go 3 0, didn't take it. Now it's Craig Waddingham's turn to get himself in front at the right time. And he has the next break. I mean, Mick will be so frustrated because he very rarely turns the table over. When he's at the table with a reasonably easy finish, he takes it out. He's done it three times, times, I think, in the match. He's done so it three times here. Yeah. And Craig's coming to the table and he hasn't really had any work to do. Mick did get let off in the first frame. He turned it over and uh, didn't get punished. But ever since then, he has been. Oh, slightly loose one from Craig this time. Yeah, he's just giving himself a little bit to do. <laughs> and Mick watches on. He knows all of a sudden there's some hope. Yeah, he wouldn't have been planning to go this way, but right round off two cushions, right hand side. Plenty but, of space to play with. But this is what I was talking about earlier. Craig, it won't bother Craig at all that that's happened. He's just fine. Yeah, I'll play that yeah. shot then. Yeah. And where it's the sort of thing that does irritate Mick when he has to do that sort of stuff. Well, this eight ball for a one frame lead with four minutes left. And Craig's right break. In the heart of the pocket and the break, as you say, Eddie. Yep. It's. Um, I'm really fascinated to see what Craig would do because he told me that he's going after the big boys. Well, he's he? If he wins this one, he's already not one of them out. So That's does right. he stay true to his word? Well, anything. let's put that on the back burner right now because Mick Hill has an opportunity. All of a sudden, and this is how dramatic these matches can be, all of a sudden, everything that's gone before changes. Mick Hill's got a brilliant layout here for 4-4 and then he'd have the break. Yeah. Huge moment that Craig Waddington going straight in off and it's about the perfect amount of time for Mick as well. So I so say a minute and a half to finish these off and then a minute and a half just to pot a ball and then just all he'd have to do is just... Well, then now he's 4-3 down. He doesn't really want the 6 west shoot. I was going to say all he has to do is stay at the table. But he's got enough time to make two dishes here. Just about perfect. Maybe make sure that there isn't enough time for Craig to make that response dish. Well, that's a loose one from Mick. He's just playing a little bit fast now. He still hasn't got that shot out of his head. It's, it, it also, it sums up him at Mick in 15 seconds. He, he rushes them a little bit. And he's just not the same player. I mean, nobody is, but it just it affects him more than others. And all of a sudden, look what's happened here. The perfect layout has, has got horrible. 
yeah, it seems to be happening with two balls left every time. Yeah. All he had, I mean, he's got so much room to land on that ball he's just played nicely. If we can just find the line between the red and the black here. No. Oh, that's huge. Got it too thin, which means it didn't Nick reach the pocket. Not being himself in this match, has to be said. And Craig Waddingham will breathe a huge sigh of relief. Although he still has to, to play a couple of shots here because it's, it's not been left nicely for him. It's not too bad. This red is a big pocket for the left middle bag. Yep, didn't need the big pocket. Probably played to just come slightly off the yellow there. Yeah, I just, just thought the yellow the might be a shade too low. And the near jaw comes into play. No, you yeah, called, it it, called it right, Eddie. Used it that time. And now, yeah. this is looking very good for Craig Nottingham. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see if Craig does pick out another big boy. Well, he said he would, but if he's already knocked out one, mm. it is worth pointing out. So we're, well, let's, let's let Craig win this frame first, and I'm going to point out there's a, there is some there is some hope if you're a Mick Hill fan. It is yeah. not all over for the hitmen if they lose. Let me explain that in a minute, because we'll have a little bit of time between frames if Craig Waddingham pots this eight ball for a two-frame lead, which, of course, he does. He is in the comfort zone right now. Hope that makes yeah. sense. Mick. And I don't think Mick's going to hang about here yet. He turns around. He concedes the frame. He concedes the match. And Craig Waddingham continues his fine form. Let you make your decision. It's a tough one. There's a lot of very good names still left. Let's go, Potts. Let's go for it. Okay, just remind me who you're calling out. Gareth Potts, yeah. Gareth Potts, come on down, sir. <laughs> Why do you got to you got to talk us through the call first of all, mate? What's what's the thinking? Uh, someone's got a play, so uh, yeah, let's uh, let's have a game. I tell you what, you, if you manage to pull this one off, not many has beaten Mick and Mick and Gaz back to back down the years. So love the energy. It's a super super break. Oh no! Oh dear, the break did not deserve that. That was right down the middle with a cue ball, huge power, and into the centre pocket. Watch this cue ball. Right down the middle. Yeah. Well, had some side on it, but even then, that's so unlucky. Yeah. Um, and either or, really, for Craig here. Uh, yeah, go, go, going back to, like, you know, anybody that knows me, I would never take anything uh, away from Craig's performance. Um, you know, exceptional player. And, and one I've been saying to you for a while, you know, it's about time he, he wins. And he won. Yeah. Uh, you know, he, he, he won on... Um, Monday night or whatever it was, and you know, obviously, congrats to him. And I think it was only a matter of time, you know. I yeah, we we talk a little bit about you know players that are knocking on the door and and you know have that sort of pedigree. And Craig's always been one of those players that we've talked about. Obviously, achieved a lot in the game. Um, got to you know won the World Masters, got close in the the World Championships, got as close as you can do without winning it. You know, he really is a top draw player. And we're starting to see year three now, the rankings settling down. Obviously, we're going to see a little bit more as it goes ahead, but he's he's a top 10, top eight, top four player, you know, depending on your you know, perspective. He's right up there with, with so many of the, the players. It was no surprise. No, I mean, I, I, you know, as I said, I've gone on record saying I do think that Tom Cousins is the best player on the tour at this moment in time. Um, Stevie Dempsey is obviously very consistent at this moment in time. He's not with us this weekend, but then next after that, you know, you, you, you're going to have to make a case for Craig and, and Melly, you know, so... Absolutely. Yeah, but I think after what, what Craig's done there, is it even daft or what, what Nelly's done? Is it, is it daft or is it genius? I, I would call it daft or like, <laughs> I don't know, you can call it whatever you want, but to me it's daft. Because, let, let's have it right, like this, it's not like... We thought Gaz would get called out very, very late because he's not exactly on the bouncy on him, he's obviously one of the best players in the world. It almost feels like a bit of an ego challenge, doesn't it? Like, I've just beaten Mick Hill, let's have you. For me, that's exactly what it is. He's won the competition last week. He's just beat Mick, and he's thought, well, I'm just going to prove a point here, so he's called the Aussie. Well, you want to know if he's at the table, well, so we'll yeah, find out if it's daft or genius. <laughs> Sorry, back to you. Oh, I love that. Rona McCarthy just calling it as he sees it. <laughs> it's just daft. I absolutely love it. Well, yeah, I, I, I think if anything with this event, you know, we know it's a bit of a fun, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's nice to take the 5K away, whoever wins. Uh, a bit more, obviously, if you get that extra bonus or whatever. But 
I think we need a little bit more in this game. I, I think everybody's a little bit too friendly and everybody's a little bit... And don't take it to heart, you know. Don't take it to, to heart that, that, that this is going on. I, I prefer it, to be quite honest. I think um, I think there's far too much pleasantries, and when you look at um, how other sports are, you know you need those little bits of needle, and and I'm not saying that's the case, but I, just, I, just, I think you need it. You know, you had it in darts for years. You know, you, you you you've had it in snooker. You you've had it in in all different sports. You know. Yeah, I'm I'm all for it. Absolutely. You know, be, 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 I think we've been saying for a while. I think there's there's, there's a lot of lot of nice. You know, niceties in the poor world. They don't necessarily, you know, it's respect and professionalism. But you, you, you know, why not? Let's let's see it. Why not, you know, create, let's create these storylines. It's simply because the recent success against him is certainly playing fresh in his mind. That it's a yeah, and it's going uh, to get a third opportunity in a row here. And what I will say is, having played out there, to be honest, there isn't the need to hit it that hard. Yeah. It, it, I think it's more just to stun the front ball. You I mean, were catching I, it really solid. Well, I potted every time. Yeah. I've no excuses. I mean, I had, <laughs> I had enough chances. So you kept snookering yourself. Yeah, it was it's nothing to do with. Um, a little, in my defence, a little bit as well is um, you know, and one or two people know that I've, I've, I've turned a bit of a, a, a little eye to uh, to the Chinese eight ball. So I've been playing a little bit of that as well. So you know, there's a one or two shots got away from me, which you know I was a little bit disappointed with. Um, but yeah, they might, maybe it's time that these guys did stand up and knock us out of the way. You know, it's it's been it's it's been long enough, hasn't it? <laughs> well, it, it, to be honest with you, I mean, from from my perspective, it's great. It's great to see it. We want to see the challenges come up, and you know, players like Craig and, and others of his generation, and, and even younger generations, the next generation below Craig, to, to really step up and actually, you know, do that. And you can argue that they are, to be honest with you. Um, you know, what Tom's done this year has been absolutely fantastic, and Craig winning, Stevie Dempsey winning, what Shane Thompson's done. You know, it's obviously yourself and, and Chris have done a. A huge amount with Ultimate Paul. Garris won his couple of titles as well. You know, it's, it's I'm not sure about that one. Craig's just played there. I don't know what options he had, but it's not great. Let's give Gareth a good opportunity here on the Reds. Um, yeah, you no. Know, just going back to what you see. Yeah, I've, 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 I think it is time that the uh, the new generation stepped up. It can't all be left to, on, on Tom Cousins' his shoulders, yeah. um, and that it does feel like that. It feels like if Tom doesn't win the tournament, granted Stevie's been consistent as well, to be fair to him, it feels like, you know, I've nipped in or Melin's nipped in or, you know, Shane from time to time. I'm looking at the generation below that. I'm looking at the sort of Aaron Davies and, and below in, in age groups. I'm looking forward to seeing those guys get in the mix as well. Really, really, you know, because th this game can be played for, you know, for a long time. Yeah, absolutely. A, you know, can be a big difference between, you know, generations really well I think what Ultimate Pool has done it's given those younger players something to play for whereas I think us older generation players have kind of built our brand and we're kind of going with it if that makes sense um, oh, he doesn't want to hit the yellow oh, he's just okay I think yeah just okay yeah when we're talking about older generation we're not uh I'm not talking too well. Gareth's still in his 30s, although only for, an, Ooh, only yeah, for a yeah. couple more weeks. I, have, I pulled, <laughs> I pulled him on that. Yeah, he turns 40 very, very soon. When I have turned 40 a couple of years back, he was quick to send me a text and tell me how old I was. <laughs> so I, uh, I got in there early when I walked in the club when I saw him. You're a good vintage though, aren't you, Mick? 1980? 1980. Yeah, same yeah. as me. Good visit to the table this from Gareth. Kept cold, first two frames. And you called it straight away. It, uh, Craig kind of give him an opening here, and obviously it took a good couple of shots to get going here, but he's allowed him into this match. So if he does manage to get through the next two matches, he becomes a marked man himself. Yeah, well, this is it. Yeah, I, 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 I do feel like that's the break on this table at the moment. Just that little, just that little pop. Um, he's no shot unless he takes on a, a very risky double on the yellow. 
back into the same pocket as where the cue ball is. I don't see any future in in, in any other shot really, unless he, oh, he may be able to to double the red into the right middle. He look, he's looking like on a second look. It looks like that's on. He doesn't want to square this up too much though. Miss top jaw. Oh, nice shot. Right in the heart. But, um, he's got a little bit to do here. It's it, it's crazy, Simon Combs, because I'm you know I'm, I'm watching this from a player's point of view, not a commentator's point of view, and I look at the table and I just think these look really sticky, and somebody that's confident and playing regularly and kind of really sort of involved wouldn't think it. <laughs> you know, yeah. I've got to be honest. It's like. Um, yeah, you, you're right. I, I spent obviously a huge amount of time in the country rocks over the last few years, and you know I'm looking for the problems everywhere, and everything seems sticky. And then you guys are all out there looking at the solutions, and the patterns just come to you, and yeah, you've got to you piece know, them together. Yeah, but you know what it is? It, 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 it's plain. Oh, he's not going to be happy oh, with this that. This is a poor one. That's as poor a shot as we've seen from Craig Waddingham for a long, long time. It's a very strange one. Yeah, that was a bit of a strange one. He had acres to land in, didn't he? I mean, he's obviously trying to hold, but he couldn't. I mean, couldn't kill that too much more. So then you've got to use the cushion. It was a, a very, just a huge misjudgment from Greg Wadding there. In off the eight ball, or is it some sort of plant? Is it cue balling off, maybe? Mm. I believe he's trying to make the one in the left centre. You see, and where this gets interesting is all, be, all be it, he's called Gareth out, but you know, you, you you put yourself under it as well. I mean. It's not like it's randomly drawn. I mean, you can't do anything about that. I don't know how much um, how much eight ball Gareth's been playing. Obviously, he was in China for a while, so we would have put some prep in to play Chinese eight ball. I, I'm not sure how much of this he's played since he's come back. I mean, he's normally prepared, but you know, he's had a he's had a couple of events. He was in the second stage of the Masters in the Champions League. So he's had a few few nights, hasn't had no pro series since the since then, as you know. But uh, yeah, I mean, but he is the sort of player that does try to prepare in the right way. I know what it sort of feels like to be Chris Mellon a little bit now, changing kind of cues yeah. and cue balls and what have you. And something that Gareth's always said he doesn't want to do as well. Tough, Obviously yeah, he's in, tough. He's in a position for the rest of this year and beyond that. that that's that's what he's going to be doing. Well, yeah, because you can fall foul of that. Oh, oh, guys. Oh, He's you, okay. can, you can fall foul of that kind of being good at everything but not great at anything. You know, it's a bit. In a, I, I was thinking in a slightly strange way. I, Gareth won't feel as sharp as he would do normally, but in some ways that you're taking some some pressure off yourself in a very volatile game because oh, so of course you you know. You've kind of almost got focuses elsewhere, and he can come into tournaments and almost more relaxed. And you know, it'd be fascinating to see how he goes in a couple of weeks uh, at the Pro Series. Well, certainly, you know, when you can play the game with freedom, it's a lot easier. A beautiful visit to the table from Gareth, but never a surprise once you saw Craig miss. Always felt like two-two. So I think he should take a little bit off, to be quite honest. I think he's hitting him a bit too hard. Continues with oh, oh dear me! Can he see the oh? Hang on! Can he see the yellow at bottom left? Hit them well, but I do think that ball's going into the middle, even with 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 half that speed. To be honest, <laughs> Gareth just doesn't know. <laughs> Asks for some help. Normally, if you have a couple of looks, it means that you fancy that you can get past it. Yeah. Um, Is that your call? He's not, he's not really the type of player that milks it, though, so I'm not sure. I've got a sneaky feeling he can. Yeah, my gut feel is he can. Yeah, but with some players, they, they milk it to a heaven, don't they? Knowing full well feel they feel free to call them out, Mick. Yeah. We're, we're, that's that sort of me, day. Me being one of them. <laughs> <laughs> and he could get through. How's the cannon? Oh, oh yeah, I think oh, he'll perfect. take that. Half, half a hand of apology or acknowledgement. Yeah, and I think he'll take that. Now he can plot his route helps him if that yellow that he's nearest to goes to the opposite corner past the red. I'm not sure if it does. Looks like he's drawing past it for the same pocket. Yeah, 
Ho Tran was doing it that way around as well. And now they're laid out beautifully for him. It, 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 in, a, in a strange sort of way, not to kind of over-egg it, but it feels a bit... Um, does it feel a little bit grudgy? Yeah, I, I, absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm sat here thinking, well, Gareth's going 3-2 up now, so all of a sudden your momentum's thinking, oh, Gareth might win this. And I'm thinking, I'm fascinated to hear what he's going to say with Stephen in the, the interview afterwards. Mm. <laughs> What's he going to feel about being called out that way? Yeah, yeah. Well, as Ronan said, it was, a, it was an interesting choice. He'd like that yellow to go bottom left. If he hasn't pushed it far enough, he's got... He's got a little shot to play here. Okay, spinning it around three. Yeah, clever choice of shot. Nice pace. Finish. Gareth Potts is in front. Long way to go in this match yet. Craig is certainly not done by any stretch. Do you know what I think I'd have liked to have seen then? I think I would have liked to have seen the player draw their own destiny. So where I had the chance of staying back in or whatever, I think it would be interesting if you got to draw it yourself. Like you're almost like kind of... What, you drawing out of a hat yeah, sort of thing? Yeah, yeah rather to, than to letting the tech, tech do the work. Well, I think so, because I think it adds a bit more... Yeah. You know, I trust you to draw yourself back out. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's about right. You know what I mean? That kind of like... Banter, it, that little banter, you know what I mean? Well, it's cruel, isn't it? From If if you'd drawn the extra life there, you'd just go back to the players' room and you'd sit down, you'd lost your match, you're, you're safely through. Yeah. Craig's got to go and win two more matches. That's what I mean, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a tough one. Would have kind of been nice if I could have like... If I could have picked it, especially now it didn't plan out. <laughs> <laughs> if, the, if the computer would have drawn me, I wouldn't have said anything. Yeah, computer said no. Yeah, <laughs> computer says not for you. You don't deserve it. Uh, the yellow on the right-hand side, it just needs to be careful with, but it does fly in, to be fair. He's got to play yellow pocket here, back to where he is, and then play centre and draw across. Yeah. And he'd like to land on the rail just so we can just float back out again. He doesn't really want to be straight on it in, in the other centre. Yeah, that's perfect. having th lost three straight frames. A break clearance from Craig Waddingham. Oh, we got a little bit low on that cue ball and they're all trying to go in and he's got nothing. Break's really not worked for him. He's had one successful in the match. And he didn't quite catch them as well as he normally does. It was a bit too much backspin, but still, hit the knuckle, hit the knuckle. That was going. <laughs> and it's a good layout for Craig Waddingham. Isn't it just... I mean... There's no rhyme or reason to this, uh, Simon, is there? So the game drives you mad. Well, I know you do a bit of coaching. You've played at you know a good level yourself in your own right, and and, and you know when when you've done any coaching with somebody and they say, oh, can you can you coach me how to break? Where 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 have you gone with that? Because I know when people ask me, can you show me how to break? I go, well, I know. Do you fancy showing me how to break? Yeah. Well. <laughs> The thing is with the break for me is that whenever someone's struggling with their break, nine times out of ten it's because they're trying to hit it too hard mm. and they completely lose everything and, and then they're mishitting it and stuff. So I, I just tell everyone to slow it down and get that solid contact. A bit like you were breaking today. You know, you get the solid just contact. Just make sure you get a hit. Get that hit Just right. get a hit, yeah. And then and then if you if you feel you need to get more power, start ramping it up from there once you get the hit right. Yeah, Be yeah. no, I, I understand what you mean. I mean, I, I've referred to it like the three wood and the driver before, yeah. you know. But I mean, like, so let's say, like, if somebody breaks a, a good Gareth breaks, but that's obviously because he breaks really good and Tom Cousins. But you couldn't even begin to try and coach somebody to break in that manner. So no. I always feel like it's a kind of, you know, I mean. And it's his break. And he doesn't hit them so well, but he is going to make a ball. In fact, yeah. he makes a couple. This is what I mean. So Gareth hasn't made a ball. 
Craig's hit them OK. And, and obviously making ball. I mean, that's just the game that we play, don't be wrong. It, it is what it is, but... So I think he's got to play the reds and he's got to be a little bit cute. He may, he may, he, he may play it now. He could... Well, no, he's going to go to, up top. He could drop the one left centre now, play the one next to the yellow and then Cannon the one next to the eight ball, but maybe he doesn't need to do that. Now he's got the gap. You'd have to put enough to forgive me there. He's got the gap, he doesn't need to move anything. That was a lovely shot to get that gap as well. But I think what he needs to take a bit of care over here is the one next to the yellow in the middle of the table. And now he gets to the eight ball. But he's, he's, he's marching on. He, he, he doesn't like... He's overcooked that. We are at 15 seconds a shot. So he can't do take too much time. But he's, we haven't seen a hint of the beeps yet. He's overcooked that though, hasn't he, Simon? He seems happy. Yeah, he had overcooked it. The confidence he's playing with. Oh, I think he just fancies just knocking the one top left last and just stunning over. He ain't got a care in the world, has he? Well, he's got every right to play with confidence, mm. the way he's feeling. But He's a hair short there. He may be OK. Can he screw off the yellow or maybe just nip into it enough? This is a big shot. No. Wow. Oh, another turnaround. Didn't get any of the shot right, did he? No. Just got himself a little bit lost at the back end there. Gareth Potts has an opportunity to tie the scores up and then it'll be his break and all of a sudden the momentum's back. But it looked wide like, open. It looked like from Craig's perspective, I know like the shot clock was on, but it looked like he was rushing around like it was really, really basic and he kind of wasn't. Yeah, there's there's playing at 15 seconds a shot and then there's, you know, we didn't, we, he was playing at five, six seconds a shot there at, at a point. I felt like he had us fooled a little bit, that yeah. it was a bit easier than what it actually was. He was playing that quick. And you called it. It was such a pivotal moment in the match. To go two frames clear at that moment is huge. Because this isn't about a race to six. This is about being in front when that clock ticks down. Absolutely. Well, we're going to be at five minutes very, very soon. And we're going to be at four all. going to get the same results. Yeah, I, 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 I honestly think he's hitting them too hard. I know it's a strange thing to say. Um, but he's, they, 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 are these a bit smelly or are those yellows actually nice? If the yellow nearest the right cushion goes bottom right, then I think the yellows are just sitting lovely. Yeah, because he's got the one below the eight ball last. Yeah. But how, where does he start? One in, he's jacked over here. The one near it, if the one on the right hand side does go, it's the one on the left hand side that is the half a problem. He's no, I don't think he's great there. He's a bit straight. Will he just drop it in and play it long? It was his, his confident character, isn't it? He's got a little bit of work to do. Because how does he sort of get back to the other side of the table? He needs like little angles to drop here for him. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, he can play the one bottom left, but he's got to then get out to play top left. You know, he's got he's got yeah. work to do here because he might not get out of here. See, unless he goes top right, is he has he got us all fooled? No, he's looking top left. Comes around to check the angle. This is. <laughs> It's like a harder version of the shot. No, he does. Just missed. Does it? Does it? Where's he going? Oh, you're oh, right. He's, yeah. he's going top left. Oh, and he's got to feather it. That's a nice shot. Oh, it's beautiful. Like every credit with it. Especially that. as it's a, you know the similar sort of blind shot that he missed in the previous frame. Well, every credit with it because he had to play like a half hit, so you can easily like decelerate on them and 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 miss them. Oh. And then he misses that one. It's Incredible. That was tight, but not that tight. It's all up in here. Well, this time for the counter clearance, Gareth has more work than the previous couple, but 
he has all the balls on the table. He has complete control of this frame and he is going to bide his time. Keep an eye on that match clock. Three minutes 15. He wants to run that down a little bit as well whilst going one in front. That's his thinking. He's not left the plant to the top right pocket, pocket here, has he? He has. He has. Wow, what a shot. And, what wow. a, and you have to say it's a, a, an error from Gareth not seeing that. Well, I mean, it is, but I mean, he's not supposed to get the plant to land plumb <laughs> like that either, is he? No, but if he knew that was a plant, there's no way he plays the same shot. Good, true, I think he would have had a go. Yeah. And Craig Waddingham steals one away with that plant. That was incredible. Craig's only really got to make a ball, and obviously not the cue ball. Oh, controls the cue ball perfectly this time. And balls flying in wow. everywhere. And look at the yellows. Look at the yellows. I think Gareth knows his chances in this match have just dropped dramatically. It's uh, it's just mad at times. It is, because he would have sat down in that previous frame, frame thinking, OK, I've got, I'm in perfect position here. He hasn't touched the table since. He's just sat there and it's been I ripped away from him. I think he's definitely played the clock with playing the safety. I'm not saying it wasn't the correct shot anyway, because he obviously has got a cluster and he's thinking, well, Craig just opens the cluster for me. Um, and again, Craig Waddingham gets the better of yeah, Gareth Potts. Must be the last four, four meetings. Yeah, it's at least three, could be four. And Gareth hasn't missed a ball. No. I'm, I'm interested to see what Jamo's going to say in the um, in the interview here. I hope he lays it on thick. 